Hi guys, it's Nancy Trekker here, back for another adventure. I'm going to Tally Lake today, uh, and I'm going to spend the weekend at Tally Lake. I know the campground is not open yet. Uh, here's my turn to Twin Bridges Road. Without further ado, let's enjoy this adventure. Let's go. Tally Lake is a short 30 minute drive from Whitefish, and uh, I don't anticipate it to be rough at all. Um, I think the highway is all paved to the campground, but I could be wrong. There could be some gravel that we have to go down. Let's check it out. So the road to Telly Lake was closed for logging, but I have been getting all sorts of 11s uh, handed to me since the new moon. So when I saw this 11 to 1 1, I'm, I'm thinking this is maybe where I want to go. Oh, it says no through traffic. It says turn around, basically. No through traffic. I guess if you're desperate, this would be a campsite. It has, like, no view. I don't know what that is over there in the bush. Maybe a cabin? Um, and there's no water here either. So I'm not going to stay. But if you're desperate, there is one. All right, so I just pulled into a fire road here. Um, in the state of Montana, you can park legally and camp overnight on any uh, forestry land. And it's marked out. I have the maps. Um, and you can get them at the ranger stations across Montana. But uh, this looks like a sweet spot. I think I'm going to set up my tent over there. And I'll be able to see the northern lights if they're putting on a show tonight. I've got it set up here in the nick of time. So yeah, my car said 11 degrees, which is not bad. It's about, in Fahrenheit, that's about... Oh, 50, 45 in there. And uh, so not bad sleeping temps. Um, like I said, I was comfortable in that enlightened equipment quilt. My setup over there. Today my breakfast will be coffee. And then I have these chia seeds. I'm just going to add to the boiling water, add some fruit, and let it sit. And walnuts. I tell you guys, it's such a beautiful day. I think I'm going to go and um, get some laundry done uh, near the river and uh, hang it out where only the bears are going to see. And then maybe forage for some mushrooms and just explore this area today. So that's my campsite here. This is how close I am to the road here. It's, uh, oh, there's a blue butterfly. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so there's the road. I think it's 913 and it goes to Tully Lake, like I said last night. Uh, you can see the mountain over there and then to the left of us. And this is where the river is. And so I'm just gonna go get some water for my laundry. So at first when I was walking around, I came across this wide open area here and uh, it looks to be a really sweet camping spot. It's a little closer to the river and I thought of moving closer, but there's a lot of uh, these clay discs around and I did hear some shots last night. So I think this is probably a place that kids or people come and just hang out and shoot guns like they do in Montana. So I'm just going to go back to my spot and, uh, and do my laundry there and uh, just enjoy the day. It's so beautiful out here. Look what I found. I've got some wild chives. I can definitely add those to my ramen tonight. 
So I'll bet you're wondering how I do laundry in the back country. And uh, here it's simple. I actually learned this in Mexico. I've been carrying around this little container all the way from Mexico. Um, and um, you just add some water and then some powdered detergent that I also got in Mexico. I'll show you. Here's my detergent. I'm almost done. But this is what it comes in. You can get it at any OXO or kiosco in Mexico. I'm sure you can get it here too, but in English. And I love the smell of it. You don't need much either because if you put too much in, I learned the hard way, it takes your skin off your fingers. But let's get to the laundry business. little bit more. Add a little tablespoon. Some water. And mix it around. Add your delicates. And this is how I wash my large clothes, which are like my pants. Anything except for my delicates, basically. Um, I wash them like this. Check this out. So I've got my dirty socks up here. I'm going to show you this awesome trick that I've learned from somebody in Mexico who they, in Mexico, they go to these um, natural streams and we have them here in Montana. You know, you've seen them and they do get the clothes wet first, but this works even dry. And I'm going to show you, they've been soaking in the sun all day and so the odor and stains have kind of been released from the sun and all I do I'm gonna do two socks at once just whack them whack them on the rock Whew. and for lingering odors use the fire and the smoke to get the odors out So I thought I'd just go for a little walk here and take that path that I found the night before um, behind my tent. It's, uh, it's a nice little walking trail, uh, maybe a game trail, and uh, I do hear bears in the distance. Um, but I'm looking for some firewood, and while my laundry is um, steeping, <laughs> is what I call it, then I have some time so I can just fool around like this, like I like to do. I find these pines so interesting with the moss hanging down from the branches. Here's a bone of some sort. Here's the other part of that bone. This is like a hundred yards away. Now would be a great time to have a drone and above the mountain tops and see what's down there. Because I really can't see. Um, the, the pine forest is so thick, you can't see what's down there. But I have a feeling it's beautiful. I think I'm gonna turn around though. I've got lots of firewood, firewood that I have to pick up and <clears throat> I'll go turn around and make some lunch.
My fire starters consist of some cardboard egg cartons filled with dryer lint and then drizzled wax over them. But check this out, the moss that I showed you earlier hanging from the trees is a great fire starter. So today I'm going to have pad thai and do it up with the celery that I had and the garlic chives that I found earlier today. The water's just boiling, that's all I need. It's a little warm. Cheers. That's awesome. In the wilderness, having a beer, even if it is lukewarm, watching the sunset, and I've got my car right there. It's awesome. I love this van life so far. Let's see if my dinner's ready. Hmm. So you see, I just added the the chives and some celery. Made it even more delicious. Hmm. Mm. This is really good. Really good. So who doesn't love roasted marshmallows on the fire? I got these coffee flavored marshmallows in Mexico when I was there in Chiapas, uh, I believe, the state of Chiapas. And that's Midland, south of Veracruz in there. Um, so I'm going to roast some up and put them on some crackers. And that's my going to be my snack. to burn. Okay, I'm gonna put on the crackers and see how it tastes. Press more. Mm. Mm. Oh. I'm just using ordinary townhouse crackers <clears throat> with the coffee flavor. Uh, coconut, chocolate, any of those would be good. Mm. I like the saltiness that the crackers give them. Mmm. It reminds me of Reishi's, which is a Mennonite thing. I was married to a Mennonite for 18 years, if you didn't know that. Oh. So I picked up a few of those culinary heritages. Reishi's is one of them, and all it is is you take stale bread or but bread or whatever you want to make into a reishi and butter and salt them and then put them in the oven at like 200 degrees very slow for about an hour maybe until they're really dried out and then they dip them in their coffee and spread jam on them and they're so delicious 
That's what these remind me of. 